Hello, everybody, and welcome to Solving Systems by Substitution Day 3, where today we're going to continue in learning and applying our question here of how can I model two or more events that share a common solution. And so the way that we model two or more events that uh, share a common solution is through systems of equations where two events are occurring simultaneously or together at one time. And what we've already learned and discovered is that the solution to a systems is an ordered pair that makes both equations true. So today we're going to be doing word problems. And yesterday we were using four steps to solve a system by substitution. And today we're going to add two more steps to that, assigning meaning to the variables and writing equations. So if you need to, pause the video and add these top two steps to the steps we've already been learning and then we will proceed <coughs> all right then so let's look at our first uh, word problem it says here mrs flips sold 300 cookies for her bake sale she told two types of cookies uh, large chocolate chip and small peanut butter cookies she charged one dollar for the chocolate chip and 50 cents for peanut butter cookies and collected $270. How many of each type did she sell? Write a system of equations. All right, so to do this, we're gonna need to write two equations and we're going to write both equations in standard form. So let's go ahead and start with the variables X and Y. So X is going to equal my chocolate chip cookies. And y is going to equal my peanut butter cookies. Now, we know from reading the word problem that she sold a total of 300 cookies at the bake sale. So to represent this, we're going to write x, which is chocolate chip, plus y, which is peanut butter, equals a total of 300. Okay, so this is our first, what we're going to call a category total, which is our total cookies. Okay, we had a total of 300 cookies. All right, now if we look back at the problem, we see that she charged $1 for the chocolate chip cookies and 50 cents for the peanut butter cookies and collected a total of $270. So my second category total is going to be the total sales. Okay, so I have total cookies is one part of the problem, and total sales is the other part. So I have $1 or 1x for each chocolate chip cookie, plus 50 cents for each peanut butter cookie, and that equals a total of $270. All right, so what I need to look at doing next after I've written these two equations is I've assigned meaning to the variables, I've written the equations. Now I need to change one into slope intercept form. So here again, we wanna do what is most efficient and makes the most number sense. So I'm going to take this first equation here, the x plus y equals 300, and I'm going to change that into slope intercept form or solve it for the variable y. So that's going to give me y equals a negative x plus 300. So what I'm going to do next is take this ex expression. This is how we are now defining y as y equals a negative x plus 300. And I'm going to insert it back into this equation right here. So I've got 1x, or you could just write x, plus 50 cents times negative x plus 300 equals 270. Okay, so at this point, I'm simply going to distribute the 50 cents to everything in parentheses. So that gives me the 1x or simply x. And then 50 cents times a negative x is going to be minus 50 cents x. And then 50 cents times 300 is going to be plus 150, and all of that's going to equal 270. 
Okay, so now I combine my like terms. So 1 minus 50 cents is going to give me a positive 50 cents x plus 150 is going to equal $270. I then subtract 150 from both sides. So I now have 50 cents x equals 120. I divide both sides by 50 cents. And now I get x equals 120 divided by 50 cents equals 240. Okay? So now I am going to substitute it back into one of the original equations and solve for the other value. So I have this original equation here of x plus y equals 300. So I can take 240 plus y equals 300. And then I subtract 240 from both sides. So y equals 60. So what that tells me is she sold 240 chocolate chip cookies. And she sold 60 peanut butter cookies. Okay? Now, just so you know, when you take x equals 240, I chose to substitute it back into this equation here. You could have used this equation here, or you even could have used this equation here. It's really your choice. There again, it's a matter of what is going to be most efficient for you and which one makes good number sense. And you would have gotten the same answer no matter which one you used. Okay? So that was our first example. So let's go on to our next example here which says, Paco's Tacos sold 280 food items from its mobile unit. Only tacos, $2 each, and burritos, $3 each, were available. It took in $660 in sales. How many tacos and burritos did it sell? Write a system of equations. All right. So same thing here with Paco's Tacos, is we're going to need to let X is going to equal our tacos. And y is going to equal our burritos. Okay? So we have our tacos and our burritos. Now, the problem tells us that they sold 280 food items. So we're going to have here x plus y equals 280. And that's going to be our item total. Okay? Because the total items sold was 280 okay then the next thing we see here is it says the tacos were two dollars each the burritos were three dollars each and it was a total of 660 dollars in sale so 2x plus 3y equals 660 dollars in sales and this here is going to be my sales total okay so see, it's a system of equations because two things are occurring at the same time. I'm selling certain amounts of an item, and I'm selling those items for certain prices. All right, so we assign meaning. We wrote our equations. Now we're going to go ahead and change the slope-intercept form. So again, the one that is going to be most efficient and make the most number sense is going to be this one right here. So I have x plus y equals 280. So I'm going to solve this for y and subtract x from both sides. So y equals a negative x plus 280. All right. So now I have defined x as this, or excuse me, defined y as this. This expression is what y equals. So 2x plus 3y equals 660. So I will substitute that in for y. So 2x plus 3 times a negative x plus 280 equals 660. So 2x, so as I distribute that, that's going to be minus 3x. So 3 times 280 is going to give me 840. And all that equals 660. So 2x minus 3x leaves me a negative x plus 840 is 660. 
subtract to 840. So negative x is going to equal a negative 180. Now, remember, we don't want to have a negative variable. So there's two ways to do this. We can either multiply both sides by a negative 1, or we can divide both sides by a negative 1. You just have to be mindful. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So that makes my variable positive. So x equals 180. OK, so now my final step would be to substitute the answer into the original equation. So I'm going to use the x plus y equals 280. When I substitute 180 here, subtract 180. And I arrive at an answer y equals 100. So we can conclude that Paco's Tacos sold 180 tacos and 100 burritos. All right. All right, so let's look at... Um, let's go to number seven or it's slide seven. All right. This one says the girls track team sold a combined total of 45 bags of popcorn and trail mix. The trail mix sold for $2 per bag and the popcorn sold for $1 per bag. A total of $55 was collected. How many of each bag were sold? All right. So we've got popcorn and we've got trail mix that we're going to write this equation about. All right. All right, so here, I'm going to let x equal the trail mix and y is going to equal the popcorn. Okay? So it tells me in my problem that I sold a combined total of 45 bags. So trail mix plus popcorn equals a total of 45. All right, so again, this is going to be my item sold. And then I see here that I've got $2 per bag for the popcorn, and or excuse me, $2 per bag for the trail mix, and a dollar per bag for the popcorn. So that's going to give me 2x plus y. And then my total sales amounted to $55. So I have my items sold, and then I have here my total sales. Okay, so if you get your category totals right, and if you get the units right, you'll never get one of these wrong. Okay, so. What's going to be the most efficient and makes the most number sense to change into slope-intercept form? It's going to be this equation right here. So I'm going to come down here, x plus y equals 45. I will subtract x from both sides. So y equals a negative x plus 45. All right, so let's go back to my, my other equation here, 2x plus y equals 55. So again, I have defined my value of y now is this expression negative 2x plus 45. So I'm going to have 2x plus negative x plus 45 equals 55. Okay. So here the negative and the positive become a negative. So 2x minus x plus 45 equals 55. So 2x minus x is x. Subtract 45 from both sides. So I have x equals 10. So now I come back up here to my x plus y equals 45. And I'm going to substitute 10 back into that equation. All 
All right. So what this tells me then is that the girls' team track team sold 10 bags of trail mix. And then they sold 35 bags of popcorn. All right, so this kind of brings together everything that you have learned thus far in uh, Math 1 about your linear functions and linear equations. It uses point slope, or excuse me, it uses slope intercept form and standard form, and it uses systems of equations to find an ordered pair solution. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is. Um, if you start here on slide number 8, okay, um, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 is where you're given the different problems. And then the slide that comes after it is a slide where I set it up for you. So what the intent of this would be for you to read the scenario here, okay, and try and write the system yourself and then just flip to the next slide and see if you did it correctly, okay? So this is kind of meant to be in a way self-checking, but also since you're at home and I'll be in my classroom probably when you're doing this and it'd be a little hard for you to ask me questions, this way you can kind of check yourself as you go along and make sure at least if you set it up correctly, you should get to the right answer, okay? So what I want you to do is at least attempt to write it uh, yourself first and then check what you did by flipping to the next slide. And then, of course, um, you know, show your work on a separate sheet of paper and upload it to Canvas. All right. So this is it for today. And uh, please make sure you check Canvas tomorrow. I know it's December 18th and it is the last day of school for the year 2020. But still check Canvas. There will be something up there for you to at least read. All right. So. Have a great day, everybody, and I will be on Google Meet from 1045 to 1145 if you need assistance. All right, have a great day.